Welcome back, boys and girls. Whether you're a hog cranker or a downstairs DJ, I need both your palms flat on the desk and your eyes right here with me. If you're not aware, I'm Kevin with Custom Night Vision. This is our YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all the different binocular night vision systems on the market. But before we get started with that, I wanna do a quick little history review. When I first started <clears throat> with night vision, not that long ago, there were really only three options available for people to buy dual tube night vision systems. You have the PVS-31 Alpha, DTMVS, and the Nocturne Katana. As we know, there's a lot more options available now. We're gonna put a bunch of stuff out on the table and we're gonna talk about them. Let's get started. Most of these we've done videos on individually before, so if it seems like I'm being brief, check out our video library. There's probably a dedicated video for whichever housing you're interested in. Um, again, some of these I'm, I'm gonna kind of breeze through, but I'm just gonna give you the high points uh, on what makes them interesting or different. So first housing uh, up for discussion is the AB Night Vision RNVG. This is a 7075 um, machined aluminum housing. It's super rigid. It does not articulate. Uh, it's kind of a no thrills option, a low cost option. These are great. <clears throat> they were very popular for a long time but um, there's a lot of other options now. These are still being produced, so it is available. If you want one of the most bomb-proof, uh, indestructible night vision housings on the market, this is definitely one of them. Next up is the RNVG VG. This is almost exactly the same as the RNVG, but with the added feature of manual gain. So if you have 11769 format tubes or tubes that can be converted to that format, you can configure this to operate with manual gain. So that's cool, still have an IR illuminator, still the same construction as the original RMVG. Just like the RMVG, you've got interpupillary distance adjustment, just a really good uh, housing from top to bottom. So next on the table, we have the RP NVG. This one's very similar to the RMVG fixed bridge design, but it adds a panning feature so you can pan your pods out for a wider, wider field of view. This housing does not have manual gain, but it does have an IR illuminator. <clears throat> Rather than knobs, it's got little push buttons up here at the top, and the interpupillary distance adjustment mechanism is slightly different. It's got these little push buttons, and you just kind of pull it into place. So that's cool. Again, very durable, 7075 aluminum. Uh, next on the table is the RNVGA. So this takes everything that they learned from constructing the RNVG and they added articulation. So this is relatively a full featured goggle uh, minus manual gain. <clears throat> you have independent pod cutoff when you flip one of these up like this, whichever pod is articulated up out of your face, <clears throat> it will kill power to that intensifier tube. If you flip them both up, both tubes should be off. So that's cool. It has remote power port so you can run a battery pack if you want. Um, I wanna say the, let's see, <clears throat> the RPMVG has a remote power port. Most of the AB night vision stuff has a power port for a Limo style plug. So uh, just be aware when you're ordering a battery pack to get the proper cable. But again, these can accommodate a battery pack, so that's cool. That was the RNVG A. Uh, the next, I guess, iteration or housing that AB Night Vision introduced to the market is the MGA. So this is very similar to the RNVG A, but it adds that manual gain feature with this knob right here in the front. Um, it's a very nice system. Again, very durable. Everything they make is 7075 uh, machined aluminum. Has the independent pod cut off like we um, gotten used to with the RNVGA, so that's neat. I don't remember what the warranty is on these. I wanna say it might be lifetime now, but it's very unlikely that you are going to break one of these. There's videos on the internet of Adam from AB Night Vision dropping these uh, from drones at in, insane heights. You're more likely to destroy the tubes <clears throat> than damage this housing like even at all. So. It is a little bit on the heavy side in comparison to some of the other options that we're gonna talk about, but it is a, a good option. I know the last time I did this video, I got some pushback 
people said, you know, that basically they want me to tell them what to buy. I, I can't really do that because I like all this stuff. I've used all of it personally for some period of time. There are no bad options on this table. The previous video we did, there were a few options that I would not recommend. But as far as the selection that we have now, um, I would recommend any of these if you like them. Okay, next option here on the table is the DTMVS. This is the original DTMVS. Does not have manual gain. It's got your kind of standard. I believe this is a grayscale switch, so it's a high quality switch. But you have on, off, and IR illuminator uh, positions. Takes a CR123 right here in the front with this big chunky knob that is very nice because it doesn't take that many turns to get it off. So changing a battery is painless and quick. Uh, it does not have any kind of IPD stop system uh, straight out of the box. You can buy that <clears throat> and put it on yourself, but just be advised there is no interpupillary distance system straight out of the box. That's something you have to add. It's a good night vision system. I don't recall what the warranty is, two or three years. Um, when they designed this thing, I think they prioritized lightweight. It's not the most durable housing, but I would say it's more durable than like a 31 Alpha. For the most part, it's, it's a high quality night vision system. They are a little bit on the expensive side, or historically they were, but we like these. They're very aesthetically pleasing. It's a cool looking night vision housing. <clears throat> From there, Acton Black made the version two. This is essentially very similar to the original DTMBS, <clears throat> but it adds the manual gain feature. Like I said earlier, we've done videos on all these. I still get questions about how to turn these on. So real quick, I'm gonna tell you, if you have one of these or you just bought one, hold this button in for about five seconds and then just rotate it a little bit one way or the other and it will turn on. Um, this housing takes the same CR123, mounted right here in the front with the same chunky battery cap that's uh, really nice to use. It doesn't take maybe a two full turns to get it off, which is very nice in comparison to some of the other ones that have more of a fine thread can be annoying if you're taking batteries in and out all the time. <clears throat> other than that, it's almost identical to the DTMBS, so I'm not gonna talk about it anymore, but good option. <clears throat> We're gonna move from Acton Black over here to the Nocturne products, which there are a few of. Um, we'll go with this one first. First up, I've got the Katana R. We did a video previously on this one, so go check it out if you want more in-depth uh, explanation. But in short, it takes a single CR123, or you can use a remote battery pack. <clears throat> uh, it has a provision here for uh, your little mini Limo plug. The battery cap on this one is nicer than some of the other ones. Um, it doesn't have as fine a thread as some of the older AB stuff. It has low battery indicators, independent pod cutoff, and this one is made out of 7075 CNC, CNC machined aluminum. So it's very, very durable. These have a lifetime warranty through Nocturne. And um, in my experience, when people do manage to break these, which is very rare, Nocturne's very prompt on replacing them but <clears throat> it's almost impossible to break one of these. The next iteration of the Katana I'm a big fan of is the Katana Molded. So aesthetically, they're almost exactly the same. There are some differences in how the pods are made because of the manufacturing process, but this is constructed of an injection molded polymer that is, I think, fiber reinforced. Uh, I mean, I've said it a bunch, but this is a very nice uh, polymer plastic material. It's very durable. I've tried to break these a bunch, and I can't. I'm not a small person. Uh, I'm about 250 pounds. I know the, it's hard to tell on camera, but yeah, I've never been able to break one of these. Uh, it has the same battery cap system and remote power port as the Katana R with the low battery indicator, and it is extremely lightweight. This housing is really cool because of the price point. It's one of the least expensive binocular night vision housings you can buy. So if you're looking to get into a, a budget dual tube system, I would start here. <clears throat> the next option on the table from Nocturne again is the Manicore R. Um, this borrows a, a lot of the same features as the Katana R, <clears throat> the same 
material, 7075 machined aluminum, but where this goggle differs, it offers manual gain and an IR illuminator. Uh, you do not get that with a Katana. It takes a single CR123, noticing a theme here, and you can uh, use a remote battery pack, low battery indicator, all that. Still has a lifetime warranty. Uh, not as light as a Katana, but still very light in the grand scheme of things. The next one on the table here, this is the Katana, or the Manicore Molded. So very similar, again, to the other options on the table. It uses the same injection molded polymer, plastic, whatever you want to call it. As a Katana Molded, <clears throat> very durable, lifetime warranty, all the same features as the other three. These are really hard to beat. <clears throat> These actually have an aggressive price point for a full featured manual gain goggle. IR illuminator, independent pod cutoff, manual gain. Yeah, I mean, these are awesome. So those are the, the options from Nocturne that are current and available right now. They've got other stuff coming out and as it becomes available, we'll talk about it. Um, let's talk about this guy. This is the Low Light Innovations MH1. These came on the scene uh, late last year, early this year, and they've been, I think, one of our top selling night vision systems. So these are really cool. It is a full featured goggle with the added benefit of being modular. So if you want to buy an MH14 or two MH14s or an MH14 adapter, you can kind of do that whole take a pod off your night vision system and share it with your buddy or turn your binocular system into two monoculars. Um, it's pretty neat. This has manual gain. It has two different IR illuminators with different outputs. Um, as configured from the factory, it takes a single CR123. Most of the time we ship these with what's called the UBC, which is a, 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 an accessory for the MH1. It's a battery port that we replace here that has a Limo, or sorry, a Fisher connection in the back. <clears throat> these have been hard to get a hold of. So if you just got an MH1 recently and you did not get the UBC, uh, be patient. When we get them, we'll be reaching out to you to either send that to you for you to install it yourself or for you to send your night vision system back and have us install it. But uh, that being said, as it comes configured from the factory, single CR123, just like I think everything else on the table, um, manual gain, four positions on this selector switch for the power, um, whatever you want to call it, on, off, and IR, two different IR illuminators, IR1, IR2. Um, these are made of magnesium. There's some aluminum and titanium parts, I think, in, integrated as well. But it's a, it's a very durable night vision system. And um, it just adds that, that benefit of the modularity if you want to uh, configure it differently. I know that they've done some announcements on the panning pod adapters being available. I haven't seen any of those yet, but I know they're in production. So as soon as we get some, we'll do a video on those as well, because I know somebody's going to comment about it in the comments. The last housing on the table I want to talk about is the newest one. This is the Nighthawk. So this one shares a lot of the same features as the last two or three full featured night vision systems that we've talked about. It is 7075 machined aluminum. Um, it's got a really nice Cerakote on it, <clears throat> or I don't know what this is, anodizing maybe. Takes a single CR123, has provision for remote uh, power uh, battery pack here, IR illuminator. Um, it's got a really nice switches and knobs on it. I think these are grayscale. That's kind of like the gold standard for um, analog night vision controls. But yes, yeah, a very nice system. I'd say it's a little on the heavy side. Uh, when comparing it to some of the other stuff, but I can tell it's very durable. I would assume it's got a lifetime warranty. That seems to be the norm now. You've got 31 style IPD stops. That's kind of a, a welcome feature because these are super easy to use and they just come on the goggle uh, straight out of the box. Uh, as far as I can tell, you can take these out also if you don't want to use them. Yeah, so if you don't if you don't need IPDs, you can just take these all the way out. 
and use the goggle without them. So that's a cool feature. I like that. Um, it's got low battery indicators. Yeah, overall, another great night vision system. So that just about wraps it up. That's everything that we feel is relevant or worthy of selling to you. If I missed your favorite night vision device, I'm sorry. It's either not available or not current or for whatever reason, <laughs> we don't have it. Um, but this is 99% of everything. I know last time there were some people uh, in the comments that said, I didn't help you make a selection. It's really hard for me to choose what you should buy because I don't know your situation, but to make those people happy, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess pull out some of my favorites. If you're on a budget and you want a really good night vision system um, at the lowest cost possible, I would say start with this thing, the molded katana. This is a great night vision binocular and you're gonna save quite a bit of money starting here. If you want a full featured goggle with manual gain, I would suggest one of these guys. If you want something real, really durable with manual gain, get the Manicore R. If you want something um, not as durable, but still extremely durable with manual gain, get the Manicore molded. There is a, a, a pretty good weight penalty anytime you go with aluminum, so just keep that in mind if you want to prioritize lightweight, go for the molded options. If you're one of those people that has to have the absolute toughest thing because you're 100% sure you're gonna break it, any of the stuff from AB Night Vision is going to be the product for you. Um, as far as full featured manual gain systems, the MGA, um, these are on the heavy side, so just be aware. There is a significant weight penalty over the other stuff when you go with something this robust. If manual gain's not that big a deal, the RNVGA, still a great option. And if you want something with a wider field of view, the RPMVG is really the only viable option, in my opinion, at this time. Until such time that uh, low light <clears throat> um, stops fucking around and gets the panning pod adapters that they've been marketing for so long, out to the market. This is all operating under the assumption that that's going to be a viable and robust system. I have not tested them yet, but when they become available and I get some in my hands, trust me, we're going to put them through their paces and we'll do a whole video on just that. So continue to be patient. Thank you for hanging in there and watching this video. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comments or you can reach out to us on any of our social medias or you can just call the shop, our number's on the website. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.